Remember Me. Truly a damn deserving to be remembered. Remember Me is a 2013 release from Don't Not Entertainment, not to mention their very first game as well, and published by Capcom. And what you're seeing on screen at the moment is the PlayStation 3 version of the game. It's also available on Xbox 360 and PC. And as for the story side of things, while keeping it spoiler free and to sum it up, you play as Nilin. You wake up in a facility with no memories other than your name, the year is 2084, and the game takes place in a futuristic Paris known as Neo Paris. You're contacted by Edge, who helps you escape the facility, and now you're on a mission to find your lost memories and stop a corporation known as Memorize from turning memories into a commodity. To give you an idea, this game is like if Batman Arkham's combat, Uncharted's climbing and platforming, and Deus Ex's setting all had some weird threesome love child. But at the same time, the game tries to be fairly unique. In Remember Me, you play as a memory hunter. You have a device on your arm that allows you to steal or remix people's memories and alter them to your will. And each level or episode, as this game calls it, has you traversing through it, beating up mutants known as leapers or enforcers who are after you, and fighting an end boss or battle and stealing or altering people's memories. So, now let's discuss the good. This time, you'll remember me. The story overall is really well done. From the beginning, you, like Nilan, obviously don't know anything about Nilan, and from there you slowly learn more and more about her and her past. Near the end of the game, I thought her origin and history was really interesting and well done, and overall I thought she was an amazing character. Near the end of the game, I was still kept guessing by some things, and I feel it ended on a good note, without giving anything away, but also left room for a possible sequel in the future, which I hope we get to see. But probably one of the most unique and interesting ideas in this game was creating your own combos through the Pressin system. The Pressin system allows you to change up your combos to do more damage, or heal you, or shorten the cooldown on your abilities. The game also does a really good job at forcing you to change up your presence in any given situation with new enemy types or boss fights. But probably one of the most interesting and fun things for me personally and remember me were the memory remit sections of the game. In these, your goal usually revolves around trying to alter someone's memory, deciding your favor. For example, in this memory remix, the first one in the game, mind you, you have to alter this bounty hunter's memory so that her husband is killed by Dr. Quaid and instead of going after you, sides with you to take down Memorize to avenge him, when in reality, he's perfectly fine. Sort of. I thought these memory remix sections of the game were probably some of the most fun and unique moments I've had in a game, and were extremely fun to play around with. <laughs> Try to focus on peaceful memories. Come on, David. Remember us. Remember yourself.
Outside of the memory remix puzzles, the actual environment and in-game puzzles throughout the game are also really well done and imaginative. Everything from your typical moving objects around so you can climb them to reach a destination, to some more unique puzzle solving design moments involving you mimicking people's memories, or rememberings the game calls them, to get around obstacles. To even moments like seen in the intro where you have to find your way around security bots. To even a neat tool that lets you take the power sources from other doors or objects to open another door or area to access something or find a collectible. It's honestly probably one of the best things about Remember Me. It has plenty of really well done and interesting puzzle solving moments for you to do throughout this game. And speaking of collectibles earlier, this game has plenty of them, and a lot of them are really well hidden throughout the environments, and almost a puzzle at times trying to find some of them but the collectibles in this game are worth, well, collecting. They can upgrade your health and focus bars, as well as offer interesting bios of characters throughout the game, information on all the crazy sci-fi technology, as well as an extensive history of Neo Paris. But this game is certainly not perfect by any means, so let's discuss the bad. I mentioned earlier that collectibles are fun to collect, and if you're like me and you're a bit of a perfectionist, chances are you'll want to collect them all. But what's never fun is when you miss one and can't go back because of a stupid checkpoint system. This is easily the most annoying and frustrating thing I had with this game. Whenever you hit a checkpoint in this game, you can't go to explore a previous area. For whatever reason, there will always be an unclimbable wall that you jump down from, a door shutting behind you, SOMETHING preventing you from turning around and exploring the previous area. So if you miss a collectible by accident, or go too far ahead and hit a checkpoint, you're shit out of luck and have to replay the whole damn episode all over if you want to find it. And worse yet, when you replay an episode and just want to blast through it as fast as you possibly can and get back to that area and grab the collectible you missed, you can't skip the cutscenes! So you'll first have to sit there and listen to Dylan's monologues a bunch, and see every cutscene all over again throughout the episode. And these episodes aren't exactly short either, they easily stretch over the hour mark, so have fun if you miss a collectible near the end of an episode. And the sad thing is, this wouldn't be such an issue with me if I could just simply go back to the previous area and get the bloody collectible I missed. On a more minor note, however, the camera in this game during combat can sometimes be a little wonky and get stuck behind things, allowing enemies to get a cheap shot on you sometimes. But not only that, the combat in this game can become pretty damn repetitive and boring. It really is simply Batman Arkham's combat system of chaining together your combos and avoiding enemy attacks, but worse yet, there isn't any form of counterattacks in this game. So all you can really do is just dodge attacks and chain together combos a bunch. This is literally the whole experience pretty much, outside of the boss fights. At times it can be interesting and challenging when they throw in a new enemy type into the mix, like for example these leapers that can only be attacked when a light is shining on them. But these moments are few in between, and you'll mostly just be mindlessly beating up grunts and mashing buttons. Even on the hardest difficulty setting, Memory Hunter mode, which is what I played on for this review, I had very few problems later on in the game beating up countless enemies. Even the boss fights themselves get tiring after a while. For the most part, boss fights in this game are essentially beat up the infinite spawning goons until you build up your focus bar enough, which will then allow you to use an ability of some kind which you most likely just unlocked on the boss, which will then allow you to attack it repeat a number of times, with each phase getting a bit trickier, and you win. This pretty much sums up most of the boss fights in this game, and it just gets really tiring and dull after a while. But on another note about the bosses in this game, the very first boss fight you'll fight, known as Kid Christmas, is ironically, in my opinion, the hardest boss in the entire game. It's at a point where you'll have very few pressing combos unlocked, low health, and very few abilities. So he'll just completely wreck you over and over until you study his moves and phases. Give it up, baby. I've studied all your moves. 
but once you unlock more abilities in this game, and moves, the bosses just get gradually less and less challenging. The final boss fight in this game, without spoiling anything, is exactly as I described before. Beat up infinite spawning goons, do an ability so you can attack it, repeat a few times, and you win. I feel like the bosses are really uneven and challenged in this game. And sadly, the most unique, fun, and interesting feature about this game in my opinion, the memory remixes, only happen a handful of times in this game, and just left me wanting more of the puzzle solving elements over the tedious combat ones. But up next... Be serious, Frank. You never even take the safety off. The Ugly. Where I discuss graphics. Now graphically, this is where this game completely excels and blew me away. Going into Remember Me, I honestly didn't expect much. A game from a developer I've never heard of, and being published by the people who spoon feed their audience Street Fighter so many times, you can't even keep track. But the amount of detail and effort put into the environments in this game is insane. Everything from the urban areas and homes of Neo Paris to the perfectly nailed atmosphere of Slum 404. This game is brimming with an attention to detail and atmosphere very few games ever achieve. The atmosphere presented in this game is absolutely amazing. The creepy slums of 404, for example, is so perfectly done, it makes the game a real joy to explore. The animations are also extremely well done, and once again have an insane attention to detail. Citizen, you are subject to a Sigma 8 arrest warrant. Stand down immediately. bugs of any kind or any hiccups and problems with the game on the PlayStation 3 version, so bonus points for that as well. But not only are the graphics amazing, the game's presentation is also really well done. Everything from the main menu screen, to the amazing sound effects in the environments and the soundtrack is extremely well done. The music will start playing during combat, and it ends right as you finish off your last enemy. film grain effect, which I normally don't like, but yet somehow it just works here. The game is just packed with all kinds of detail and style. In conclusion, Remember Me is an amazingly well done game considering it's a brand new IP from a new developer, which will probably be forgotten sadly, and end up another hidden gem of the 7th generation of games. Which is sad if you think about it. 
We're at a point now in the video game industry where most publishers only want sequels of already well-established game franchises with their predictable sales numbers overtaking risks with new and interesting games. With that being said, you can easily find this game for under $20 nowadays online, so I highly recommend you pick this game up if you want to try something new and you're interested in what you saw. Overall, I did remember me, uh, uh, I had my rating somewhere, uh, uh, what's my rating? Can't, can't, I can't, er fuck. Red Riding Hoods got a basket full of kick ass! <laughs> <laughs>